Imagine stepping into a bar bustling with people, glasses clinking everywhere, laughter echoing throughout the place, and a barmaid caught in the beautiful chaotic mess of it all. The scene looks pretty simple at first, however, there is more to it than meets the eye. In today's video, we will be analyzing the details hidden behind the brush strokes of Edward Manet's last masterpiece, A Bar at the Follies. Manet masterfully culminated realism and impressionism in his style after being inspired by the works of Diego Velazquez and Francisco Goya, artists he admired a lot. And as Manet progressed in his artistic journey, he gradually moved away from realist principles in both style and subject matter. In 1863, he made a significant departure from traditional art styles by creating two controversial paintings, The Luncheon on the Grass and Olympia. These works depicted female nudes in contemporary settings and were rejected by the esteemed Académie des Beaux-Arts. However, Manet still diverged from established norms and established himself as a pioneering modernist. This painting of Manet in particular was created by him in 1882, right before he died due to a chronic illness. It was established at Paris Salon in the same year and is considered a significant asset of the legacy and art that he left behind. And to some, it is evidence for Manet's controversial and puzzling style of painting. It depicts a scene from the Folies Bergère, one of the most popular music halls and entertainment venues in Paris at the time. It was a symbol of the modernity and consumerism that characterized the Second Empire and the Third Republic. It was a place where people from different social classes could meet and enjoy various forms of amusement together, such as ballet, cabaret, acrobatics, pantomime, operetta, and animal acts. However, it was also a place where women were objectified and exploited. Manet was a frequent visitor of the Follies Bergère, where he enjoyed the spectacle and the company of his friends. Manet also made some sketches and studies of the barmaids and the customers at the Follies Bergère, which he later used for his paintings. Anyways, in the artwork, we see a barmaid, who we now know as Susan, standing in the middle of the crowded room. She was a real employee at the Follies Berger, whom Manet met and interviewed in his studio. In front of her, there's a marble counter that she's leaning towards. On top of it, there are all kinds of drinks including beer, wine, liquor, and also a handful of oranges. What is interesting is Manet's attention to detail. For instance, we can see the distinct labels on all of the drinks. One of the beer bottles with a red triangle on the label has been identified as the brand Bass Pale Ale. The barmaid is wearing a black dress with a white collar and a corsage of roses. She looks directly at us, the viewers, with a detached and melancholic expression. What is worth noting is that the figure of the woman stands very similar to that of the liquor bottles. This could be seen as a metaphor to how in the nightclub, Follies Berger, barmaids were known to be selling themselves, in addition to just selling drinks, and were more often seen as a mere object, just like the one sitting on the countertop, decorated in flowers and gold. At first glance, everything in the painting feels ordinary. However, upon looking at the details, we notice that there is actually a mirrored wall behind Susan and everything that we see in the scene is in fact a distorted reflection of whatever is going on in the bar. For instance, the man and woman in the right corner of the frame are Susan and the customer that she's talking to, but the alignment is way off. Although the painting shows us as the barmaid standing in front of us, we see everything that she is seeing. We can glimpse the legs of a trapeze artist in the upper left corner and the electric lights that were still a novelty at the time. We can also see a man in a top hat leaning towards the barmaid, apparently engaging her in conversation. It's almost as if the viewers were looking at the scene through her perspective, feeling what she is feeling, trying to understand the mystery behind her transcendent, melancholic gaze, looking at nothing in particular while still being able to witness all. The man in the top hat who appears to be talking to her is actually standing to her left outside our field of vision. The barmaid's reflection is also shifted to the right and tilted slightly, making her look more engaged with the man. But who is this man she's talking to? And why is it that her reflection appears to be more involved in the conversation than she actually is? Well, these are some of the questions that have fascinated and perplexed art critics and historians for decades. There are several distinct ways to understand and explain this painting, but none of them are certain and precise. 
Some have said that Manet intentionally made a confusing and misleading composition to test our view and assumptions of reality. That the man the barmaid is conversing with is the painter Manet himself. There has been a lot of debate about the extra spaces between the barmaid and her reflection and the inconsistencies between actual and reflective worlds in the painting. An art historian in Australia, Dr. Malcolm Park, seems to have solved at least part of the puzzle in his doctoral thesis titled, Ambiguity and the Engagement of Spatial Illusion Within the Surface of Manet's Paintings. With the help of a photographic reconstruction, Park shows that the painting is more accurate than previously thought to a one-point perspective view. According to him, Manet actually created the scene not from a frontal straight-on position, but from a viewpoint slightly to the right. Seeing from this angle, the supposed conversation between the barmaid and the top-hatted gentleman is actually an optical illusion. The man is actually standing outside and to the left of the viewpoint, and is looking away from the barmaid. He is not standing right in front of her, facing her. Similarly, the barmaid's frontality is also optically misleading. Instead of standing parallel to the bar and looking straight ahead, she is facing slightly to the right of the picture as we see it, facing the new viewpoint. Other critics and art historians have claimed that through this painting, Manet has expressed a feeling of loneliness and separation that the barmaid experienced in her job, where she had to deal with the attention and demands of male clients without having an emotional connection with anything in her surroundings. And the difference and in inconsistency between the actual and the mirrored world is an allusion to that. There are other views about the painting as well that have suggested that Manet was actually trying to subtly criticize the social and ethical problems of modern city life, where fun and entertainment existed alongside abuse and dishonesty. Another interesting detail in the painting is the lady with the opera glasses. It adds to the complexity and intrigue of the scene. She is part of the crowd that is reflected in the mirror behind the barmaid, and she is holding a pair of opera glasses to her eyes. She is wearing a fashionable dress and hat and seems to be looking at something or someone in the hall. Her presence in the painting sits in contrast with that of the barmaid. While one is able to enjoy the luxuries of life, the other is forced to see them in captivity. She represents the social and cultural phenomenon of the flaneur, or the urban observer, who was a common figure in the 19th century Paris. The flaneur was someone who strolled through the city, observing and enjoying the spectacle of modern life without being directly involved in it. It was also someone who wanted to be seen and admired by others, as well as to see and judge them. The Folies Berger was a perfect place for the flaneur, as it offered a variety of entertainment and opportunities for exhibitionism. Manet's paintings were often considered to be controversial and were criticized by his contemporaries, who found them shocking or even scandalous. He faced rejection and ridicule from the official Salon, the prestigious annual exhibition of French art. However, he also gained recognition and support from fellow artists such as Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, and Paul Cezanne, who admired his originality and courage. He also inspired younger generation of artists who followed his footsteps in exploring new ways of expressing themselves through art. Whatever his intentions were while creating this masterpiece work of art, it captures the essence of his artistic style and vision, reflecting both the beauty and complexity of modern life. This painting invites us to look closer and deeper into its mysteries and meanings. Click on any of the two videos on the screen right now for more content.